Hey guys, welcome back to the arena, and today I wanted to do another standard event um, looking at Orzov Agro life gain. So this was um, a request from one of my viewers, and really happy to kind of run it out here in a standard event, see how it does. First of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting my content. It really does mean the world to me. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel. I couldn't do this without you. Um, I do want to let you know that the deck list will be in the description, both under Moxfield and untapped.gg. And then also I'll have a link to all of my playlists where you can check out my uh, Road to Rank 1 and Standard with Mono White Humans, um, other Standard event videos, collab drafts, and then my first OTJ draft as well. So if you want to check that out, it should all be in the description. Uh, in addition, I do want to give a shout out here to my first member. Again, Kibo, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. This is a great way to help support the channel. If you want to also consider supporting the channel um, and helping me grow, this is a nice way to, to do that. And you can get perks like early access, um, I'll have a couple more that I'm hopefully trying to get rolled out here soon. Um, but early access to my videos, as well as shout outs here at the beginning of my videos. So check that out. Uh, here is how you can do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So Orzov Life Gain. This is a deck that I built um, a couple months ago, and I know there's there's definitely been um, other versions of this deck out there, um, but I wanted to kind of see if I could bring any sort of new life to it here. And looking at all the new cards, there actually wasn't much that I wanted to change about it. I did want to add in Legion to Ashes, which seems like a good answer to um, both Boros tokens, some other of the um, you know, aggressive strategies that uses tokens, but also it can hit uh, Planeswalkers, any non-land permanent. So it's a nice way to kind of have sort of a more of a hard answer that also can incidentally help with the aggressive matchups. And then you have kind of the tried and true, uh, four Lunark veterans, four Ruin Lurker bats. And then for the, the suite of removal that I wanted to add, I put in one copy of Virtue Persistence to kind of go along. That also gives you kind of the life gain. And then in addition, two copies of Cut Down, just for super early interaction, just because with all these slick shot show-offs that are running around, having early interaction is super important. Um, two copies of Legion to Ashes, kind of like I was just talking about. And then four copies of Gumdrop Poisoner. So you can create a food, uh, a food token on turn one and then use this to then later give minus X minus X to a creature where X is the amount of life that you gained this turn. So when you play it, you can sack your food token, gain some life, maybe have some triggers, and then kill something. So that's what we've got for removal. We have two copies of Iganjo in the land count also to help out. Um, so for our removal, we have, I guess you could say, you know, um, nine sort of spells main deck, and then two Iganjo, so sort of like 11 removal. Um, for the rest of the creatures, we have three copies of Ellis Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim, to give the life triggers and death touch, kind of as a nice creature. Um, you've got four copies of Amalia and four copies of Voice of the Blessed as kind of the payoffs, and then four copies of Deep Cavern Bat to help with sort of hand disruption and another Flying Life Linker. Um, notably, this version of the deck does not run... Um, Oh god, what was the name of that card? It was um, the uh, the one mana enchantment for white that uh, has sort of the life gain effect. Um, the name's escaping me, but uh, I think the Uneaten Feast, something like that. The Case of the Uneaten Feast, I think is what it was called. But um, 
I just ended up just not really having enough room for it. Plus with a lot of the control strategies, they're running a lot of removal and mass sweepers that exile everything, so you kind of don't get the benefit. So it seems sort of less good. I also wanted to have two copies of Gix, Yawgmoth Praetor, just because it's so powerful with all of our flyers. We've got the, the Ruin Lurker bats and the Deep Cavern bats, which go really well with drawing extra cards. And then I wanted to make room for two copies of Shieldred, since another way to gain life on a regular basis without having to do any work. And it just, uh, it's a nice uh, curve topper here. So for the uh, lands, we have 24 lands. I wanted to make sure to have quite a few, since we are trying to power four different um, man lands here are four of the same man lands, Restless Fortress, um, and then we have four Shattered Sanctum, four Concealed Courtyard, has some fast lands, four Caves of Koilos, and then two copies of each of the basics, and then two Iganjo and two Takanuma. So I think we can afford to play these pain lands here and use Gix for kind of the little bit of life that we're paying since we're gaining a ton of life here. Um, I've got to be careful with it though because the mono red matchup is so lightning fast in how much damage it can put out that I really wanted to be a little cognizant of <laughs> what kind of pain lands we have, etc. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump into a standard event. I hope you guys have had a great week so far. I'm excited for the weekend here to kind of take a little bit of a breather and... Uh, yeah, so it's it's been fun. I've really been enjoying these kind of standard events. Um, also been really enjoying draft. Ended up doing another draft um, that I didn't have a chance to record, but ended up uh, with another Golgari brew. And yeah, it was great. A lot of fun. So let's go ahead and jump into the event. Incidentally, if you guys do like the drafts. Um, I love doing them. So if you want to see more of that, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm hoping to do, you know, a decent amount of limited. Uh, this is primarily going to be a, like a, a constructed channel, but I like limited also. Right. Opening hand looks great. We've got mana. We have stuff to do. And this deck has a ton of uh, tap lands, or at least in the early part of the game, if you have like the Shattered Sanctums or the Fortresses, you just kind of want to get those out of the way. Um, now, notably, we could go Veteran here into turn two Voice of the Blessed. Um, so we probably could here. We don't have a whole lot to do on three but it's something you want to at least consider depending on what matchup you're against. I think here, since we've got another spell on two, I'm actually okay playing this on three. Okay, so we're up against another Orzhov deck. <clears throat> Now this is nice. We could go for Voice of the Blessed right away, but we could also play our tap land and just get another veteran going, and I kind of like that. Don't really know if it's control yet or if we're dealing with sort of a mirror match. But yeah, Sunlit March is definitely... This looks like more of a budget deck. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen this one here in a while, so could be more of a budget list, but I guess we'll find out. And I think we're just going to push in here. If it if he uh, decides to trade, that's perfectly fine. <clears throat> and this is nice because now we can drop Shield Root on four. I'll have Virtue if we need it. Hmm. 
But yeah, I think that, you know, this deck is decently well positioned to fight some of the aggro decks. It um, can potentially have a little bit of more of a struggle against some of, like, the go big decks or uh, control. But um, I think it definitely has the tools. The hand disruption really helps with the uh, deep cavern bats. And you could even put in more of that kind of thing to help with that matchup if you, if you uh, wanted to. All right, let's just get Shieldred going here. the answers um i guess let's just get poisoner set up Okay, Sanger Connoisseur. Sure. So we can just virtue that. Um, I guess we could also poisoner it, and I kind of like that. We don't have quite enough mana to poisoner it, so I guess we'll just virtue it. Okay, now we can just do Poisoner. I guess let's attack first, but yeah. And then one more land and we can set up Virtue, start getting back Shieldred. Or take their Gix, that'd be pretty fun. And there is Virtue. All right, let's go get their gigs. Pylon, destroy target. Okay, I can get rid of Pylon, that's fine. Could get in with the, the Fortress also, but they just have an easy block, so we'll just attack with two in the air. <clears throat> okay, and that's a nice, nice draw there. <clears throat> and we can get back our shieldred, I guess, but we can do that next turn anyways. Hmm. Guess we can just find more action. Uh, 
Uh, let's take this Sengir Connoisseur. That looks fun. All right, so they're at 10. I think we don't even need to play Shieldred here. We can just activate. That should pretty much do it. I guess in just case they've got a board wipe, we'll just hang out here for a turn. See what we're up against here. Okay, opening hand looks good. We've got stuff to do, got some mana. Here we go, mono red. Okay. All right, so let's lead out here with the Caves of Coilos. Yeah, because we want to go veteran into deep cavern bat. Guess there's an argument there for like playing the shattered sanctum so we don't take pain land damage. But like we're also getting the Lunark veteran into play, so it's kind of hard to see. <clears throat> we could go for LS Core here. Um, I think we want to go Deep Cavern Batch to see what's going on upstairs. And I guess we could consider like double blocking the Codebreaker as it is a pretty big threat. Um, we do lose a fair amount of lifelink by doing so. So. Yeah, I mean, also having the etching of Kumano in play is pretty rough, because then we don't get to cast anything again. So it's not great. Um, we probably just soak the damage, so I guess in that case we just attack. Yeah, maybe we should like held back and try to like double block or something here. I, uh, I think we just hold. So we could go for Sadistic Pilgrim here plus getting the Poisoner with the food token. And I guess that would be decent if we knew we were gonna live through the next turn. Um, we might need the lifelink from the poisoner just full stop let's see we go to 10 or we go to 9 by playing the pilgrim block three creatures Oof. 
I mean, we don't know that they have action in their hand, but, like, they can push a lot of damage here. Otherwise, we could play, like, the Gix to try to cover some blocks. Yeah, because Ellis Core is probably not living through a turn. So I think here... Hmm... I really want to be able to make this food token. I think we just play Gix here to be able to hopefully block something. I don't think we can pay the life for more for more cards here though. All right, so if we block like this, two, five, eight, we don't die. I think we want to have Veteran in play. So this isn't great, but getting Kumano off the board is super important. All right, now we can make a food token and play the Poisoner. Is that enough? Oh, actually, that was a misplay. I should have attacked first, then we could have used it to kill the Codebreaker. Ugh, that was a, that was a pretty big misplay, actually. Um, okay, I think we can still hang on here, though. We attack, gain the life, and then just sit back. We don't draw. Okay, now we're forced to block, so we can block here. We'll take one, two, three, four. We'll gain three. See, if we block here, we go to seven, and then we take three, four, five, six, go to one. I think this is the best one because it keeps our gumdrop poisoner alive. Okay, go to one. Now I think we just gain the life right now to try to stabilize. Hit in with Deep Cavern Bat and Poisoner. Everything else holds just in case. Now we do start drawing. I think we can draw twice here safely. <clears throat> Godric is a banger. All right, so now Elis core blocks Godric. If we block here, we take four. Drop to three. I think we don't want to give up these creatures, though. And just kind of grind them out. Yep. Whew. Yeah, it was definitely a misplay not killing their 3-2 um, their when we could have. But we were able to kind of claw it back, so that worked out. 2-0. Yeah, opening hand looks great. We've got action, stuff to do. We can't cast our Voice of the Blessed, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully we draw into some lands. Could be Boros Convoke, or maybe like the new Boros Spells deck with the um, kind of all-in strategy. Yeah, it looks like Boros Convoke. Okay, I think we just play Sanctum here. Hope to hit. 
we could have also gone like gumdrop poisoner for one uh but i think that was that'd be pretty aggressive because if like we don't find another land then we can't play anything next turn so this at least gives us the option of taking deep, deep cavern bat Hopefully they don't have the god draw here of Knight Errant into um, Imidans. <laughs> I guess they do. Oof. This could be game already. All right, I think we have to get their Knight Errant. Um, God, they can just push for so much damage. The other line is like going Ruin Lurker Bat plus Gumdrop Poisoner, and then next turn playing Voice of the Blessed. But then they get to go for a Knight Errant again. I feel like we have to take it. God, what a beating. Um, yeah. Okay, so they drew the mana for the Evangelist, which is going to be rough. I was hoping that they would not. Luckily, they can't block the Deep Cavern Bat for one turn. We don't have any removal, and I guess we've got Poisoner here. So we probably try to set up Poisoner and just hope it's good enough. God, are we just facing lethal next turn? I think we might be. So we go to 14. We have a 3-3 three, three that can block. So we're looking at 2, 7, 11, 13, 15, 17. Yeah, we're, we're super dead. I guess if we play, yeah, we don't have time for Poisoner. We can just play like Ruin Lurker Bat plus Voice of the Blast. No, we can't. We don't have the mana for it. Ugh, it's a beating. Yeah, I think if they all on attack, we're just dead. So I guess in that case, we don't even get to, to attack. We have to block. We lose everything. We can block these two, take two, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Go to now, nah, we're still dead. We will wait for the all in attack and then, <laughs> fortunately, just yeah, couldn't stop the, the aggressive start here. Okay, two and one. Other cards I was considering was um, Pest Control, which is a nice sort of answer to a bunch of one drops. We have a bunch of one drops ourselves, so it's not like perfect, but potentially could be an answer. Um, or I guess just more copies of Legions, um, what have you. Like Legion's ending, yeah. But even I think with that draw, we would still have a very tough time coming back there. All right, opening hand looks good. Uh, we want Deep Cavern Bat on two. I guess we've got Amalia. So we could play Ruin Lurker Bat and just start getting set up here. I like getting this Restless Fortress down, though. So I think I'm fine having Amalia come out on three. Let's... 
let's take a peek. Yep, okay, we're running into the same deck. A little bit of a different list. Guess let's take one of their... We don't really have any <clears throat> artifacts or enchantments, so we'll just grab any Amalia here. I guess if they miss on Amalia, we can go for cut down. Oof. That is nasty. Okay. Uh, we definitely hold up cut down for their Voice of the Blast as it is more dangerous than the Amalia. I think we hold the Aganjo here if we can. Take a little bit of pain. So I think, yeah, we hold up cut down and just play Amalia here. We could also go like Veteran plus Lurker Bat and it's sort of the same. Yeah, I guess I'll probably do that. Okay, so the Uneaten Feast, there we go. Double triggers. Oh my god, they've got another one. Oh no. Oof, this is going to be trouble. I think we need to look for removal, as much as I'd love to get a Ruin Lurker Bat going. Well, I suppose it does grow our Amalia. <sighs> Double triggers, I mean, that's pretty good. But their Voice of the Blessed is gonna get indestructible, so we need something else. Happy to trade veterans here. There we go. That I can get behind. Oof. Ooh, Gix's command is nasty. That's gonna be super nasty, actually. Ooh. So I guess we can just try to make it so that the Amalia is the um, creature that has the most power. I suppose it depends on what we draw. Yeah, it's not good for us. Okay, I think the play here... I guess let's go Shattered Sanctum. Actually, let's go Voice of the Blessed. And then attack with everything and see if they want to try to eat one of our guys. Oh, that's a good one.
since we've got the Amalia here, we can also use the Aganjo if they decide to block. Will they fall for it? Nope. Oh well. Super annoying, but we're not dead. So we've got enough. We don't have enough to do everything. <sighs> Guess we could do Fortress. They have good blockers on it. So yeah, I think we just play out these two, or these three. So now if they attack with anything, we can get rid of one of our guys um, and then gain some life off the Phantom. Ugh, yuck. Well, so much for that plan. They are doing our plan, but doing it better. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't even triple block <sighs> okay so here I think we take 9 use this voice to chump their 9-9 nine nine. And then we gain two counters on our voice. Poisoner is good. So that will make our voice a 9-9, nine nine, and then we can swing. <coughs> but they can block with a phantom. <sighs> Yuck. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can make their voice like a 6-6 six, six here. It's probably the move.
we're gonna have to draw really well to try to come out of this one um, we need legions uh, legions ending to deal with their voice so it's like a two of like one in <laughs> one in 21 one in 22 something like that Okay, so we definitely block with one Phantom on the Voice of the Blessed and Poisoner here on their 1010. So now we just have to deal with their voice somehow. Could suicide our fortress here? I think we need to save that as a potential blocker. Um, yeah, I guess these are both indestructible, so there's no reason to attack. So I think we just sit. So if they're giving us this option, I think maybe, is it right for us to, I guess they have their own Restless Fortress. We should probably just block their 12-12. I guess we could block the Ellis Core, but since we have Iganjo, we can use that actually to deal with their Phantom. This is great. So we block here and then we Iganjo their Phantom, take the two, and if we can draw something off the top, it at least gives us an option. We won't have to have another turn of fighting through this Phantom. I think Shieldred unfortunately just has to chomp. But it gives us something. Gix's command is going to do it. Oh well. I 
Yeah, the Gix's commands were really good. Um, something you could certainly put into, you know, you could modify this build to run that also. All right, two and two. Let's see if we can win out here. Yeah, this has been a fun deck to play. Um, definitely kind of brings me back to when I originally um, built my take on it a couple months ago. But uh, there's probably a lot of cards you could switch out. And I'd love to know in the comments what you guys think, how you would change it. Um, so yeah, this opening hand looks great. We've got mana stuff to do. Let's go ahead and keep. And here the question is, do we want to run out the turn one veteran or ruin lurker bat in hopes that we draw the, uh, the land for the voice? I don't know. I think maybe... I think we probably go for it because like otherwise if we play the fortress then we just play these two on turn two and it's not that much different but if we miss it's pretty awkward um hmm. yeah maybe i'll just play fortress like if this was a shattered sanctum then i would probably just play the cave but since we don't know if we're getting more white I'd rather just play it out So possibly up against Demir, maybe Esper. Looks like Demir if they're running basic islands. So it looks like they've got no bat for turn two, which is nice. Um, I think we want, what do we want here? We're good on lands, so I'm probably just gonna go with voice. I think the flying is a little bit more important. Oof. Path is brutal. That was a nice pickup, though. So yeah, I think we're gonna go Iganjo here so that we can play out both. And yeah, we'll keep that in case they've got some tough to deal with threat. Especially since we have Restless Fortress and we can keep gaining life. All right, so more of like Demir control looks like. You never really know what you're gonna get. I assumed it'd be like, I, I suppose like it would have been sort of a tip off that they weren't playing like the uh, turn one siren, whatever it's called. Let's just develop the board here a little bit, get our other fortress down might have to lean a lot on the fortresses this game but if they have like Sheldra that could be pretty rough all right let's look upstairs see what they've got going on Well, since I've got two Jaces, um, I think we just take the deduce here. Sure. So 
So now they probably just siphon insight again. Yeah. Got to be a little bit on the ropes on this one. We're going to need to have some good draws to to beat these Jaces. Okay, well, Rune Lurker Bat is not too bad, so that, that feels pretty good. So if they don't go Jace, what are they up to? Probably just Field of Ruin. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, at least we have extras to spare, so let's at least try for it. Um, I guess if we activate one, no, we won't have enough mana to activate another. Not interested in trading our Deep Cavern Bat. Whew. I guess let's see if we can kind of whittle them down a little bit here. Yeah, that early Path, uh, path of Peril was super brutal. And we're going to have to kind of grind here because we don't have any more of the um, Amalias. Okay, well, at least that's pretty ballsy. Maybe they have removal in hand. Okay, or they're just looking to, like, trade out Jaces. I could see that. Little do they know that we have an extra Deep Cavern Bat. Um... Let's see, we still have enough to activate. Yeah, so that's perfect. Okay, so let's take the deadly cover up because that's completely brutal. Mind Splice deck, huh? Unfortunately, they'll pretty soon be able to block with Restless Reef, so that's kind of annoying. Just go face here or do we try to pressure Jace? I think we still have to pressure Jace a little bit. Hmm. Let's see, I guess we drop them to seven. Yeah, maybe we just go face here. Second path is brutal. Yeah, mass sweepers is going to be rough. So we could Legion to Ashes and still have enough to attack. They also, the problem is they have enough to block. So I guess we could... 
we would like trade our fortress and then Legion to Ashes, their Restless Reef, doesn't really seem great. I think instead maybe we just Veteran plus Legion to Ashes, their Jace. And then if they want to counter this, then they can't block. Man, another field of ruin is brutal. So we don't quite have enough to double activate in a turn. We can start draining them though. Um, I guess they can feel the ruin, but if they do, then we'll have enough to activate the other one. Suppose they could do it like during attacks, which is kind of annoying. If they do it now, though, we can still go and activate the other one. We want to attack. This isn't great though. It's like we can get them to five, but we can't get them anything past that. So maybe we would just bluff it here and just sit. Yeah, it's not great. Double field of ruin. Oof. They have us decently covered now. Okay, well we can double activate, but they can, can they get rid of both of ours? I guess they can't, they can't quite get enough, get rid of both. They might have like removal on hand, but I think we, we go for it because we've got nothing else to do here. And now we're totally covered, unfortunately. They've got, uh... yeah, with the deadly cover up, this is going to be pretty brutal. I think we're probably just done here. Yeah, they've got like a full hand. We have a ton of life, but I don't see us coming back from this one. I guess if we'd been able to stick the Virtue of Persistence, maybe that would have been our out. Yeah, and they wanted to go find any more of those. That makes sense. Yeah, I think now, unfortunately, this is going to do it.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get there. We ended up with two wins. Um, so we went two and three, but we still got at least a pack, so that's kind of nice. And would love to know in the comments what you guys thought of the deck, how you would change it, and um, yeah, you know, other decks you're excited about. But uh, anyways, thanks guys for watching and we will see you next time.